move my Word document off to the side. Uh, just so long as you know, I can see the pi the pictures that I'm trying to draw. You do not have to trace on top of these. These are simply meant as sort of reference images. And the first one I'm going to do is the camera. So if you just wanted to see a quick reminder of what the camera looks like, I can leave it right there on the screen. The very first thing that I'm going to do is um, I am going to grab the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle for this. The um, instructions have you start with a regu regular rectangle and then come into the corner and use the live corners to round them up. This is a questionable choice for two reasons. First of all, if you know you need a rounded rectangle, then to me, it's smarter to actually just use the rounded rectangle tool as a beginning point. But secondly, because if you don't actually have one of the newest versions of Illustrator, you're not going to have the ability to do the live corners anyway. So I tend to just draw the shape that I want to start with and call it a day, uh, rather than spending time to do it in a slightly more slow and cumbersome manner. But either way, if it would ever actually let me grab this stupid, um, it is too small to grab properly. There we go. All right. Um, so this is my camera body. If you have live corners and or you just don't quite like the shape of your rounded rectangle, you can make use of it to round them up a little bit more. Once you have that shape in place, you're ready to do the next object, which is going to be the ellipse tool. All of the shape primitives live in the same section. I'm going to grab the ellipse tool and I'm going to do a couple of circles. I'm going to do the biggest circle first because it's easier to be able to see them this way if the larger shapes are drawn first because then they'll get covered up by what comes later. And then I'm going to do two more circles inside of this to look like a lens. The trick, by the way, for this, if you're trying to draw them live, as in correctly positioned to start with, if the object is turned on, it always seems to want you to grab it. Whereas if the object, as in nothing is currently selected on mine and I hover over it, I can more easily get to the center point and draw the second circle. I'm drawing with the shift and the alt or the option key held down, um, which allows me to go ahead and do a concentric circle uh, because I'm drawing it again from the center, which is now a shared center for those two objects. I'm going to um, turn off that circle again, hover over the center, do the option and the shift, and do the smallest one that's going to go at the middle of the group. If you drew yours more like this, meaning one, two, three, and they weren't over each other. Can you make them that now? Absolutely. You can drag them into position and use the smart guides to help you know when they're in the right place, or you can just select all three of them at once. I'm going to leave mine all spread out. You can select all three of them at once, and you can use the align features to align the centers horizontally and vertically, and then you get them all in the right place. The only reason that would not have worked in my scenario is if that one had been on top, it would have worked. I just wouldn't have been able to see it. So I have a couple of options if I had drawn mine in the wrong sequence. I could either turn the fill of the largest object off, or I could send that one backward. Now, in my case, I moved something along the way, so I need to do the alignment again to reposition them so that they are all one inside of another. Okay, so I've got my camera part, I've got the lens bit, um, I need the flash that is in the bottom left hand, I think that's meant to be a flash actually, it's either a flash or film, you know, number of pictures left indicator or, I don't know, it's something. Um, so I'm going to grab the rectangle tool, I'm going to draw a rectangle that actually hangs out of my larger shape. I've got my fill turned off so I can see through to tell what I'm doing. It's hanging off the left, it's hanging off the bottom on purpose. Uh, I'm going to create some lines that represent the divisions that I'm seeing in the original. And once I have one of them, I'm going to hold down my Alt key to drag a couple of more copies. And that's pretty close to what we're seeing in the sample image. Mine might be a slight amount further apart, but it is certainly close enough that I am okay with it. All right, so once we have this, I need to select the large rectangle 
and those small lines and the rectangle that I drew just a moment ago. And I'll hold the shift key down so I get all those at the same time. I could select everything and then come back up in here and hold the shift key down and remove the circles. But it's easier just not to grab the circles at all and draw a box that includes everything but them to start with. So everything with the circles are selected. I'm going to use the shape builder, which is the overlapping circles with a little um, arrow on it to get rid of the pieces and parts that I don't need here. I'm going to hold down my Option or my Alt key and I'm going to drag over the parts of this that hang off the outside edge that I don't want. And by dragging over those, I'm able to remove them. And now I have just the sections of that that I wanted. So again, I selected the big rectangle plus the smaller rectangle and the little lines and I used the Shape Builder to Alt drag or Option drag across the exterior pieces and trim it to right exactly where I needed it to be. And now I have essentially four more items and then I'm done. First one I'm going to do is probably out of sequence for the instructions, but it's the one that goes on the right hand side and it's the battery case or something like that. And then I'm going to do the buttons that are along the top and the left edge. I'm going to do all of these at once because I'm going to use Shape Builder to clean it all up once I'm done. And I'd rather not have to do that multiple times. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it like this. And I'm, again, deliberately going into the shape because I know Shape Builder can be used to tidy that as I work. And you could use rounded rectangles or just standard rectangles for this, whatever makes the most sense uh, is fine. And once you have that, I'm going to select those three, no, four new items that I just drew, plus the large rectangle. And now I'm ready to use the Shape Builder. Last time we were getting rid of the stuff on the outside that we didn't need, and that was an alt drag. This time I want to add the stuff that's on the inside to the larger shape. So no alt key, no option key. I just want to click and drag to recombine the parts that are inside the shape back into it so that they're not separated. And that leaves me with a really clean edge on the um, outside edge of the larger shape, but still the um, additions that I needed. And so the camera is now 90% done. Well, okay, I've lost my mind. The film bit on the front was the opposite. I was supposed to do the other way around. So one more time. All right, so uh, Shape Builder and add, add, add for the one, the film canister or battery part, it's gonna be option on the outside to remove that section. And okay, now that looks great. Um, with this, I'm gonna select it all. I'm gonna scale it downward because it's too big at the moment. And I'm gonna make the stroke about five point. So I could type in five or I could click around until it was about there. And then pick some color, color other than black to be the stroke. I don't care what color, it just needs to not be black. And then we're going to group the camera, which is Command G or Control G. And we can move it up and sort of a little bit out of the way. And the camera is complete. I'm going to stop and restart the video for the pen nib. And then you'll see how that piece gets added to this.